The series begins by showing a boy who searches in an area full of skulls. His name is Daniel Spellbound and he gets on a rope bridge to reach the other side. Once he gets there, he stands before a giant human face sculpture and leaves his torch in a skull's hand, then goes to the other side by entering into the sculpture's nose. Many ogres are sleeping on the other side, so he crosses them carefully and silently without waking them up. They are giant in structure, but somehow he reaches a golden face sculpture and feels very happy. He removes the face from the pole and searches the ogre poop by inserting his hand. He presses a switch in his hand and takes out glowing mushrooms from poop with the other hand. Suddenly his cell phone rings. All the ogres wake up, and one stands in front of him angrily. He throws the golden face sculpture and runs away. Ogres follow him while he gets on the same rope bridge, which leads him to the ogre's den. Ogres follow him, and finally, they succeed in catching him. But he throws one of the mushrooms through a slingshot that turns the rope bridge into ice. Finally, it breaks, and he crosses the bridge very fast. An ogre starts throwing other ogres to his side of the bridge. But Daniel runs very fast and comes out of the gutter hole. Next, he goes to a guy vending a stall named Tyson. Daniel supplies the magical items to him. Then he gives him magic mushrooms from his pocket case. Tyson starts grinding the mushrooms and drinks them, which magically makes his duplicates one after another. He provides a stall with each of his copies. The smaller duplicate is issued a burger. He wants them to earn good profit for him that day. Daniel talks to Tyson about his plans and that he will make money through Fugu Rose. He does not try mushrooms because he thinks magic is a lie. Also, friends and hygiene are a lie. On his way out, two men in pink electrocute him and he falls unconscious. They take him to the Peamaker, who wanted gnome whiskers for her magical pies so everyone would love her baking. But he still needs to collect that. She does not believe him and calls a little pig to sniff him thoroughly and give them if he has any ingredients. They find a mushroom in his pocket, but the Peamaker is so cruel that she orders her employee to remove one of his eyes. She makes a stamp on Daniel's hand that will remind him that he is bound to bring the rose in 24 hours to end his debt. He runs out of the pie maker shop, and the pig follows him. Upon reaching a safe place, Pig reveals that the pie maker is an evil woman. Daniel wants to give her a fugu rose because that is the only way she will end his debts. He promises the pig that he will only give her fugu if she frees the pig too. Pig's name is Hoji. Daniel and Heiji come in front of a place where Daniel knows he can find a fugu rose. They enter a building door and a man follows them. Heiji sniffs the area and detects that the vending machine has the most potent magic. Daniel tries to solve the code, and it works. They fall into the deepest room by magic, where several creatures are stored in a preserved form. Hoji touches the giant octopus and can sniff strong magic here with his ability. Finally, they find Fuguro's tree. Daniel warns Heiji to avoid touching anything here. Suddenly the octopus that Heiji touched comes to life, and its tentacles catch Heiji and throw him. Then it wraps around Daniel and squeezes him. Hoji tricks tentacles into feeling Fugu Rose, and it vanishes instantly. Hence he saves Daniel's life. Then Daniel picks one rose and comes out. He offers Heiji that if he stays with him and helps collect magical things, he will make him a 50% partner. Hoji is just about to accept the offer. Suddenly dowsers appear, and they electrocute them, declaring they have arrested him for unethical use of magical power. The scene shifts when Tyson collects the money his duplicates bring him after selling duplicate hot dogs by magic. Dowser Montana finds him and reminds him that he is committing a crime by casting spells on edibles. Tyson knows that she is about to arrest him, so he makes his duplicates, who start fighting Montana. Montana being brilliant, kills his duplicate and arrests Tyson efficiently. Next up, Daniel and Heiji enter the Dowser's office, where they are informed that Primus Camilla wants to meet them. It turns out that Camilla already knows Daniel's father, Duncan Spellbound, who worked for the Bureau for many years. She wants him to work for Bureau to complete his father's tasks, who was tasked to find Griffin's egg. Seeing the abilities that he found, the Fugu rose quickly, Camilla knew that Daniel could do better. She gives him his father's journal, but Daniel refuses to work with her. So she takes back the journal and makes another offer to help him that she can help her pay the Peamaker's debt. She sends her in D-Block to take his time to think about it. Lucy leads them to D-Block, where no magic can enter. Tyson is already there, who tells them about Victor Albright, who is trying to find Griffin's egg. It's unique because it can absorb the magic of any kind. They stole a rose from Albright, and Tyson appreciated that they had done something brave. 
Meanwhile, the tattoo says that his deal with the pie maker has ended because 24 hours have passed, and he has failed to bring the pie maker her rose. So announces that whoever catches Daniel gets $10,000 in prize money from the pie maker. Hearing this, every prisoner comes ahead to fight and have Daniel for money. Daniel keeps fighting and throwing them out of the window. Lastly, one most powerful prisoners throw him down the window, and Hoji follows to save him. Finally, Daniel throws the last prisoner down the hollow space too. Then he goes through the jail barricade as he is not magical. He tries to find the rose because he tells Hoji that he can't leave the jail without the rose and journal. They break the locker room code and get both rose and the journal. But Lucy comes just as they are about to leave silently. Suddenly, all jail lights turn off and a dark mage appears with a fiery body. He attacks Lucy, who falls unconscious. Then Daniel gives Fugu Rose to Dark Mage, who leaves the Bureau office after getting it. Daniel has no choice other than to work for Bureau, so he meets Primus Camilla and tells her he will do the task if she removes the Pie Maker stamp from his hand. She pulls it and makes another stamp of Bureau on his hand to bind him in the contract. Bureau is trying to find Griffon's egg before Dark Mage gets it. They need suitable gear to fight the League of Alchemists to help them reach Griffon's egg. So if they have to have their hands on it first, they need special gear. Daniel asks Heiji to sniff every graffiti in New York for magic. They finally find graffiti that is spellbound and has a hidden building inside. Daniel asks Hoji to wait and jumps into the wall and disappears. But Hoji does not stop and follows him and finds that the inside area is so pretty. It's the place where fairies live and the music buzzes all the time. It seduces Hoji through magic and he likes everything about it. Daniel takes some of the fairy jellies and just as they are about to leave, Hoji falls on the ground making a loud noise. All the fairies come and Hoji is disappointed to see they are ugly, unlike in fairy tales. They run and come out of the graffiti wall and Daniel immediately paints the wall so no fairy can cross it. He explains that they need the fairy jelly to buy other gears and the boatman token is one of them. Daniel takes Heiji to a plain painted wall, telling him it's the best place on earth. He enters a code, and the club for trackers opens. Its name is Cheat Code. The tracking system installed on the front door traces anyone who enters so that they can't hide their real identity. When Hoji passes through it, it tells that Hoji is a human. Turns out Hoji is changed into a pig by magic. Daniel feels sorry for him and asks if he wants to revert to his human shape. But he does not want to be human again and is happy the way he is now. Then Daniel goes to the shop to trade fairy jelly. The shopkeeper knows that fairy jelly carries a considerable value, so he asks Daniel if he can find anything in the trade and asks for a boatman pass, slingshot, and ammunition. Meanwhile, Heiji starts an argument with Demi Goblin and is about to start a fight by constantly nagging her. At the same time, a powerful tracker enters with a magical horn that no one has ever been able to get. He is given a big reward for trading a magical horn. On the other hand, Camilla calls Lucy into the office, telling her that even though Daniel is brilliant, Camilla lacks trust in him, so she wants someone to look for him at the time. Daniel gives his fairy jelly to the vendor, but given the small amount of fairy jelly, the vendor tells him that he must bring double the amount of fairy jelly to trade for all items. Vendor hears his conversation about Griffin's egg, so he makes an offer that the vendor will pick the game, and if he wins, he will get Daniel's father's journal. But if Daniel wins, he can get all the gears of his choice. So they choose the Grooves of Fire game to make a decision. It's a dancing game, and Daniel does not know how to dance. So Heiji takes permission to dance in his place. He shows impressive moves and sets the highest score, but he does not know that Victor, the vendor, is a spider. He dances with all his legs, scores better, and wins the game. Daniel gives him the journal. He opens it and is surprised to see that the journal is empty. He starts hitting Daniel for lying to him, and they strike the other trackers and begin fighting. Daniel opens the book and ensures that it's not empty and everything is written in it. A tracker tells him that his father has cast magic in the journal so only the family members can read it, and he knows his father was a brilliant tracker. Suddenly, every member of the tracker's club turns into a golden statue except Daniel. The identification machine announces that Victor Albright, the alchemist, has arrived. Daniel tries to hide from their eyes of Victor, but he finds them who is here with his numerous masked guards. Victor shares his concern over Griffin's egg that Bureau is trying to have, but it will fall into the wrong hands. He wants Daniel to join him in the quest to find Griffin's egg. Suddenly they hear weird music, and the stamp of Bureau on Daniel's hand starts lighting up. Lucy enters a van and asks Daniel to get inside. 
she electrocutes Victor's guards and Daniel gets in the truck, taking Hayaji in gold statue form. Lucy starts the van and crosses the wall that takes the van outside the cheat code club. Just as they are about to leave, Victor turns the van into gold. They are outside the tavern, but the van can't move. The Victor's guards come outside and throw rays toward them, and hence they accidentally turn their fellow guard into gold. So to revert the magic, they throw another beam, and Daniel tricks them into throwing the ray onto Heiji and the car. Then they drive and move away in a moment. On the way, Daniel asks Lucy about her accidental arrival at the club. She says she is appointed to ensure Daniel is on the right path for the job. They don't trust that he will handle Griffin's egg perfectly. Next, they discuss in the car that before going into the Desert of Giants, they must meet the Mermaid Queen of Shanghai. He tells the love story between the Insect King and Mermaid Queen to Lucy. His father said to him that they first got into a fight with each other and then they fell in love. The Insect King gave her a ring and afterwards, he took her heart and after that, the Queen is nowhere to be seen to date. They reach China by magic, and Daniel brings out the boatman token from his pocket. He explains that the queen lives in the waters of Shanghai, so they must first find the boatman to reach the mermaid queen. Daniel pulls the boatman token out of his pocket and asks Hoji to sniff it. He keeps sniffing for so long, and they keep walking behind him and get tired. Then he ultimately reaches a place, but no water or person can be seen. Daniel notices the jeweler's shop has mermaid tears as pearls so there must be an entrance to the water. Lucy turns around and finds the door to the mermaid's water. The man from the club follows them from the beginning and follows them here. Upon entering, the receptionist does not listen to them, but when Daniel brings out a coin, she eats it and enters the water before him. On the other side, a giant frog appears and opens his mouth. They sit in his mouth and it takes them underwater. On the other side, he drops them in a room where Hoji hoops around. He jumps on a square and lights turn on. The statues in the room begin firing rays from their armor, and a wall appears that starts coming toward them. Then all the squares light up, with certain words written in another language. Daniel figures out that they have to type a code in Mermish to get through the wall. He remembers the childhood songs that he made from the stories that his father told him. Lucy turns the English into Mermish to crack the code, and it turns out he guessed the right word, so the door opens. The Mermaid Queen permits people without any magic. Daniel requests Lucy to remove his hand's stamp of bureau so he can enter the gate. She reluctantly does that. After getting inside, the Mermaid Queen asks why he arrived. He tells her that he wants an emerald from her which the Insect King has given her. She gets angry and puts her heavy hand on Daniel, and he falls on the floor. Daniel asks her story. But despite the famous love story between the Mermaid Queen and the Insect King, she told a different story. The Insect King killed her people and took magical items, which he sold to collect wealth. Similarly, the Insect King stole her heart, too and that's why she looks ugly and can't reproduce. He promises her that he will bring her heart back. He comes outside and tells Lucy the real story, and now he wants to go to the outpost to bring her heart first. It's where Dowser can't enter and only trackers are allowed entry. So he requests Lucy to stay outside, but she disagrees. They reach the outpost in the middle of the sea on the highest building. Daniel calls Tyson to get information on the entrance process. Tyson informs him that Kel guards the entryway and sells a potion from the original mermaid's heart. So they have to trick him first. They plan that Lucy will trick him, and Daniel will sneak inside to get the mermaid's heart. Lucy tells Kel they are here as Gorgon hunters and has brought Hoji too. Kel tells him to buy their special magic items in the inner part. Hoji pulls the card from Kel's pocket to swab in the entrance door that would let Daniel in. While Lucy distracts Kel by lighting up a magical lamp, he falls to the ground. Daniel enters. Kel shows him little puffy creatures that clean anything produced by pigs. Then he transports them in a box for money to the tracker's club. Kel takes her to his private vault. At the same time, Daniel gets down through the lift where the mermaid's heart is stored, which is filled with valuable magical items. He wants to make money with everything but just takes his heart and enters the elevator. Just then, the security alarm buzzes. Meanwhile, the area down the elevator starts being filled up with acid. Hoji is still down there trying to come out, and after so much struggle, he gets on the elevator too. Then he comes to the floor, where Lucy talks with Kel about his illegal possessions. Daniel stops her, but she brings out her dowser's weapon. It turns out that Kel is already suspecting that she is a dowser. Meanwhile, Daniel escapes the area rapidly, taking Hoji with him. Kel tells Lucy that if Daniel is a tracker, he will never take her because trackers only care for themselves. 
Daniel takes Hoji and gets into the van with the mermaid's heart. Kel laughs as Daniel goes away without taking Lucy with him. This was the recap of episode 1 to episode 5 of Daniel's Spellbound series. Soon we will be back with the recap of episode 6 to 10. Till then, stay happy and chill out.